couple of Dysons. One's obviously the regular size V6, and one's the small toy version. So there they are next to each other, you can see the size difference. But this one has never worked properly, which is a shame, so I'm going to open it up and see how it works. It's supposed to collect dust, and then you can empty it at the bottom, and uh, it's, yeah, it's supposed to act a bit like a, a real vacuum, like this one. But um, as you can see, it's had some good use. We've lost the bottom door. And in fact, that's actually a rubber seal. And if we try it. Pretty low on batteries now, but these little small pieces, I think they're foam, they fly around. And it's supposed to uh, pick up things inside. I mean, there is something in there, but that was actually placed in. It's never actually picked up through the tube. Here's the head. So you can see when you move it, it's got similar to a rotating brush, like this one. So it's quite a good representation of the actual Dyson. This one's quite old now, so it's got the old style connector. This seems to have a bit of a new connector. And we've got some Hello Kitty on there. That didn't come with it, of course. Uh, no replaceable filter on this one, unlike this one, but it's quite good, isn't it? And then this handle here, you would actually press this to open the door rather than have the thing at the back here or the newer versions. I think V7 onwards, you'd have a, a handle here, much like this one. But uh, yeah, and you can see this is like the V7, it's got like a filter type of thing at the back here for the exhaust where the original V6 didn't. So I think this is much more based on a later version, probably the V7. Let's get that out. That's been shoved in. So yeah, it looks like it's got some standard tiny crosshead screws in there. So we'll open it up and see how it works and find out why this one's never worked properly. And you can see in there, it's actually a flap. Can you see that moving? So it has actually got some technology going on. Be good to see what's inside. Let's begin the opening. By the way, this hasn't got anything more than just a hole here. These are to rotate the wheel to make it look like it's turning. It's obviously officially branded and licensed by Dyson, so that's good. But it was made by, um, who was it made by? Kasdan. So there's the battery compartment. Okay, begin opening. Okay, we've got all the screws out. Unfortunately, they've got different sizes. I didn't make a note of which ones go where. I think the large ones, the longer ones, are at the bottom. And then the three at the top are the shorter ones, probably. Anyway, let's see how this comes apart. I suspect there's more to do, possibly, at the front here, because there are screws in here. Oh no, 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 here we go. Oh, it's coming apart. Okay, so there we go, there's the wires for the battery compartment. And here's the motor. So all the interesting bits are actually in here, so we need to get this open somehow. So I think it's probably going to be digging those open. Mm. Being careful of the wires. You can see the mechanism when you uh, move that. This opens the door, which of course is long gone. But it's never picked up dust properly. So when we emptied it, it was always empty. So something's wrong with the suction here. It might be just, um, I don't know, maybe a seal isn't working properly. But uh, I'm going to continue opening up. So those screws came out of there. Mm, that doesn't do a lot. 
Ah, but it does show the door. I don't know if you can see that in there. So inside there, there is a little flap, which I guess you can open and close in order to keep the dust in. Can we see in there? There it is, there's the flap. So, yeah. That's all that kind of reveals, so no point going in there. So we need to get the cylinder off, don't we? So, how? How without breaking? Maybe it just clips together. I continue. Oh, there we go. Oh, look, there we go. Haha. <laughs> oh, the doors, the bins come off. So what are these then? Yeah, they are tiny foam pieces. There they go. Look, they're just foam. It's kind of natty. And in there, you can actually see there's a bit of dust. So it has collected possibly a little bit. But the instructions kind of indicated it did pick up dust and you could empty dust. Oh, look, my door's come off. There's my door. Ah, I've got some more, more screws. One screw and one blanking area. And that could... What's that? Some vent. Mm, curious. So there's the door opening mechanism. Okay, continue. Okay, removed. Well, I've started to remove that screw, but this inner cylinder just pops off. It just stays in place with compression fit. Um, what's in here? So just kind of, oh, there's a little filter in there, look. Probably not HEPA. But there is dust in there, so it has been attempting to suck up dust. Maybe it just doesn't work as well as the adverts state. But, uh, yeah, it never had enough suction to suck anything up there. Not even, like, small bits of polystyrene. So that's why I thought maybe there's a fault in here somewhere. But, uh, yeah, okay, so... Need to go in a bit deeper. We need to get this red ring off, I think. It should be loose. Uh, I wonder whether that's... Ah, I think, actually, that's not a blanking plate. That's a piece of the foam that's got in there, so I need to dig that out and then get the other screw off. Yeah, so there was another screw in there. There we go. Standard. Thankfully, all the remaining ones that I've taken out seem to be all the same size. Same as the top three, so that's good. So the only long ones were in the battery compartment. So let's just move them across. Uh, oh, here we go, look. Aha. So there's the top bit. Obviously no cyclones. And now we have this, what appears to be motor housing area. Oh, look, more screws. Two either side, one there, one there. Oh, three screws, one there as well. So I guess if we open them up, we're probably gonna see the motor and the fan, but I don't see why it doesn't suck very well. Maybe it's just uh, mostly for show, but let's get those open and we'll see the whole thing. Okay, so those screws have come out. Um, one, two, three, and these are, again, same size as all the others, so that's really helpful. Move my flap. Oh, there's the piece that was stuck in, by the way, so that was a piece of foam. I'm going to save that in the bin. I have lost a wire with all my wriggling, of course, that's come off, which is... Inevitable, one of the risks when you take things apart. But now I've got the situation where I can't get into the motor housing. Oh, oh, there we go. That makes it a bit easier. I've lost both wires now, look. Positive on the right-hand side because there's no indication on the motor. So this red door release thing is actually holding the whole thing together. So I need to remove that somehow. So I can get the motor apart. 
So let's do that. Uh, here we go. So that's coming out. That just goes into there, look. Oh, this is like taking a real Dyson apart. Oh, that one's... I don't know how does that clip in there. That probably went in there. Not that this does anymore. Yeah, that went in there. That's right, that goes into there. That can be removed. And then finally, ta-da, there's our motor. Check out that. That's not too bad, actually. You can see there's, you know, some design gone into here. So that's creating a good airflow, good suction up through here. And then probably, yes, out through the bottom here. Look, there's the uh, exhaust vent, which actually went through here. So that's how it was. So it must use some sort of suction method to bring it in through the bottom here like that. Up through here, into there, and then this will fly it around and out the bottom. So there we go, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so there's the motor. Pretty standard. There's a date there, look, what's that? Possibly 2016, 18th of July, 2016. Very standard motor, that one. Interestingly, I wonder if it was the right way, actually, because there is a positive there. Is that a positive mark? I'm gonna have to check and see if we uh, get any suction. It must have been, there was some dust on there, so. It is possible that's how it was, but uh, yeah, so there we go. And there's a tiny bit of kind of rubber there, just insulation, make it seat properly. But there's nothing in the way of seals, unfortunately. It's just as you go, um, you're relying on the plastic clamping together. There's our filter, bit of sponge. Well, that's quite natty. Oh, it's a removable look, so if you do need to replace it, you can do so. Ha ha ha. So there was a bit of dust in there. But, uh, well, there we go. So that's it. So that's inside the little mini toy Dyson. Um, of course, in here, all you're going to see is just the batteries I've got in there. Um, just a standard battery pack. So you can see that's just coming apart there, which do need replacing. But, uh, yeah, there we go. So... That's how it goes together. I don't know if I can fix it and make it any better, to be honest, especially now we've lost the door. It's probably not worth it, but I wanted to see what was inside. It's not cheap, so I wanted to see if there was a bit of, you know, actual technology there to uh, suck in dust, or I suppose you're supposed to play with small bits, bits of polystyrene, which, you know, would make it look like proper dust. But yeah, there is, there is technology there. There's a proper little fan blade and, uh, you know, a housing, etc. And that's it. And there's even a door, of course, to stop the dust coming out if you tip it forward, which you do have on the uh, on the actual Dyson. But that's it. Thanks for watching. I had that the wrong way round, so I had to take it all apart again. Let's resume. Get down, screw. Yeah. As you can see, I've lost all my bits. The bin is emptied. Right, uh, this is a weird bit because that was tripping me out because it's kind of got a uh, a bit where this is only on one side leading to this bit, trying to create some sort of vortex, I guess. So again, there is some technology. So that goes like that. 
So you can see there's a kind of a blanking plate here and then a vent here, possibly to try and get to air to move around in one direction. So yeah, looks a bit odd, but that's how it goes. Don't forget the flap. There it is working. Pretty crude, but it's kind of been there. And now it's the case of getting the bin on. Now that's better, I think. And then hopefully, oh, my flap has come off again. Okay, I'm gonna shove all these, these bits in, then close it with that bit. And hopefully it will go together. So that's kind of where I am. To do six, 27, 28. So I only had 28. I wonder if I've lost some in the process. Nothing here, but maybe over time. So there we go, right. This nose cone bit, this is a tricky bit. This doesn't seem to want to go on very nicely, but uh, that's on there eventually. Okay, there we go, that's gone on. So it's the two screws in here. And then it's gonna be solder these wires back on. Hopefully I've got the motor the right way around. Well, positive is definitely the red, so I've gone by what the motor says. And yes, the flap fell out once again. So it's back in for the eighth time. Oh, that flap, tell you what. Okay, screw in. This is probably as hard to take apart and put it back together as the actual cyclone unit on a V6. In fact, that's probably easier, which is weird, but there we go. So there we go, we just got those bits to put together now, so I'm gonna solder those connections. I might look for the door, put the door back on, and then, uh, actually that would go like that, wouldn't it? Might be done. Okay, it is working. Wow, that took a long time to uh, resolve, to get it back together, but uh, yeah, we're up and running, and I've got the fan the right way, because I can feel the air coming out of here. So it was actually uh, going in the right direction you can feel it actually coming down the outside so it's supposed to suck in there somehow but uh, there we go that's quite cool quite entertaining um, it's dark now so I think we're done cheers for watching